Hey, what's going on? JD here. I have a quick tutorial for you. Today, we are going to show you how to make animated punk rock lettering, much like you would see in the magazines in the 80s when this style was prevalent. So we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to create this in Motion 5, create a plugin, and then we're going to show you how to use it in Final Cut Pro. As always, don't worry, we're going to provide you with the plugin for free if you don't happen to have Motion 5. But I always recommend it is a great program to learn because you can make some really cool things like this. Before we jump right into it, just want to say thanks to my friends in the path less travel. That's some video footage that I have of them from when they opened for Buck Cherry last year. So thought that would be kind of cool to use with this tutorial because they are a little bit pop punk. But anyways, you can check out their music down below. I do have a link to their website. They've got some new stuff coming out as well. So for this tutorial, we're going to export a bunch of JPEGs of photographs that we took of letters cut out of magazines. So these are actual photographs of letters that I just cut out of magazines randomly. Uh, so we're going to export those as a JPEG and take them directly into Final Cut Pro. Uh, and there's a good reason reason for that because JPEGs aren't transparent and what we're going to do is we're going to create PNG files. So in Photoshop what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the letters here and all I'm going to do is basically cut them or copy them and then paste them into a new layer and then hide the background and that gives us a nice transparent layer and then all I'm going to do is save them as a PNG. Now I took these photographs as big as I could but because we're working in a 1080 timeline I'm going to reduce them to 1080 just to make my life simple and of course I'm going to label all these letters based on the letter they are is just going to make things simpler along the way and I'm going to do this for every letter in the alphabet so it takes a bit of time but it will get us to where we need to go so once we are finally in motion what we're going to do is we're going to create a letters layer and then we're going to import all those PNG files that we created, A through Z. And you can do more than just one of the alphabet. You could do multiple for this and have a lot more possibilities. So you can see our timeline is now populated with all of these letters. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a new group and we're going to call this selection. So ultimately what we are going to do is create a means in which we can just select one of the letters for the timeline. So instead of, you know, turning a bunch of switches on or off, it will just be a simple pop up menu for us. Now we are going to accomplish this by selecting one of our letters in the letter group and we are going to make a clone layer. We're gonna take that clone layer and move it to the selection layer. And then what we're gonna do from here is we are going to head over to the inspector and we're going to select the clone layer. And from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to add to rig, create new rig, and what we're going to do is at a pop-up. So now you can see we've got snapshot one, two, and three. We are going to add all of our letters to this menu uh, throughout, and we're gonna start with the letter A. All we're going to do is drag and drop it into the box, and that should have it added. And of course, we're going to want to rename this uh, so that it is in fact, representative of the letter that is in there. And we're gonna do this repeatedly. We are going to go through the entire alphabet, 
each time we're going to add the new letter. So there we've got B. We will get to C, and C will be the final one that's listed here. Uh, we'll just quickly do that. And then what we will do is after we've renamed that, we are going to add, we'll just press the plus button here, and we will add a new layer. We will call that D, and we will quickly run through the remainders and get this all completely done. So as we finish this off, what we're gonna do is we are going to turn off the letters layer, not the clone layer, but the letters layer. We're gonna turn that off. And what that does is it allows the selection to be shown. So if we go to the menu, we select X, V, all these letters, we can see that it will select it and show that letter only. So all the other ones will be hidden. And that's how we do that. So when it goes into Final Cut Pro, you will just have a menu with the letters, making it much, much easier to select and get what you need done accomplished. So to animate the text, what we're going to do is we are going to keyframe the rotation. We're going to move it a frame forward and we're just going to sort of move it back and forth. We want sort of that stop motion animation kind of look. Uh, so we're just going to do a little bit of rotation here and there. Uh, once you get it to a point that you like, uh, you, you know, the speed for the animation, uh, how it moves, if that is acceptable to you, then we're going to move on to the next step. Now, when I did this tutorial, when I did this, I was moving one keyframe and I would adjust. I actually deleted half of those because it was just a little bit to uh, frantic for me, the animation. Uh, so we ended up cutting out half of those before we finally got it done. But you can tune it to your own preference uh, and go from there. Now we want this animation to be continuous. So instead of piloting out keyframes for an extremely long period of time, what we're going to do is we are going to loop the footage and that allows us to do, you know, 10, 15, 20 keyframes of animation and then just have it cycle through. So we're gonna drop the loop on the clone layer, simply add a marker, and then we're going to edit that and we're gonna to go to the drop down menu and simply select project loop end. What that will do is stop the loop. So it will loop through the entire animation and then start again. Of course, we're going to reduce our timeline so it only contains the animation portion, but we are essentially done and can now export it to Final Cut Pro. So with it now in Final Cut Pro, you can see it's as simple as dragging and dropping the lettering on the timeline and selecting the actual letter that you want. From there, all you have to do is move the lettering to where you want within your timeline and resize it to the size that you want. And then of course, set the duration of the effect for as long as you would like or add as many letters as you would like within your timeline and do that. So we're going to speed this up a little bit so we can get through this a little bit quicker and show you a couple tricks to change the animation directly in Final Cut Pro. Because they're all animated the same, things like changing the angle will help make it look a little bit different, but in order to change up a little bit more, what we're going to do is we're gonna mess with the timing. So we're gonna select this clip, we're going to basically make a new compound clip and what that's going to allow us to do is to jump over and change the timing of the clip. So we can slow things down. We're going to slow this down to 50%. Uh, and then we're just going to make it the same as the rest of the clips. But you can see already that that letter moves or appears to move a little bit different. So you can do this with as many letters as you like until you get an animation across the board how you want it to look. So there you have it. That's how you create punk rock lettering for your Final Cut Pro videos. I personally really like the style, but then again, I've always been a fan of punk rock. Let me know what you think down below. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell button so you get notifications, and we'll see you in future videos. And until next time, see ya.